a football player and a coach, an investigative reporter, a published author. He has a doctorate and is a professor at Chaminade. He's a political columnist, a philanthropist, and an advocate for youth sports, not to mention half of a radio duo on Hawaii's longest-running, top-rated radio show. In fact, there is little he hasn't done. He is Dr. Larry Price, also known as Coach. He attended Roosevelt High School, where he was a member of the choir, ROTC. He was a baseball player and also a member of the football team. But back in high school, he was a little smaller than he is today. I was 5'4", 130 pounds. So to make my father happy, Los Gonzalez made me a water boy, so I would be part of the team. See? And they used to use me for tackling practice and other things, you know. My senior year, I finally got to play, but I only played in one play, and it lasted only seven seconds. After graduating from Roosevelt in 1952, Coach attended UH before being drafted. So I was at the university for one season, and I got drafted. I was in the Army with some real good football players, Herman Clark, for instance, a good friend of mine from Chicago Bears in Puno. And I started playing, and I don't know, I was eating the potatoes, I think it was, or rice, or whatever it was. I started, I went from five, 440 pounds my senior year, one year in the Army, and I was almost six feet, 190 pounds. And after being in the Army for about eight years and playing football in the Army, I decided I was going to go back to school on a GI Bill and become a coach. And uh, that's pretty much what I did. I came back and got two degrees, on a, one on a Korean GI Bill and one on a Vietnamese uh, GI Bill. And uh, got a job at the university as an intramural director and assistant coach. So that's how I started, you know. And then I, you know, went along, went along, and George Allen, uh, they tried to draft me my senior year at the university. But uh, I didn't want to go because I had hurry. <laughs> I said, I'm going to stay here until I graduate. That was before I had a degree. So I went two years. I was already coaching, but I hadn't played football for two years. And George Allen talked me into trying out with the, uh, the Rams as an offensive, defensive, multi-position uh, player. And then after that, I, you know, the university offered me a job as a, a line coach for free. You know, for free coaches, eh? you know, how can you go wrong? So, came back and uh, coached, and it was fun. You know, I had a lot of good guys, a lot of good players. Worked at the hotel as a security guard at night and coached during the day. Coach Price played in the Hula Bowl three times and is one of only a handful of athletes who returned to the Hula Bowl as a head coach. After a decade and a half of coaching, he realized things had to change. It became obvious that I wasn't going to be able to stay in coaching. So uh, I decided uh, I'm going to get out. I had no idea what I was going to do. I was going to go teach, you know, and uh, got a telephone call from Heftel, Cease Heftel. And he said, how would you like to learn the radio business? <laughs> I just busted out laughing. You know, I thought it was really hilarious. I said, well, you know, gee whiz. I said, I, I don't uh, think I would do very good in radio. I just barely passed English. I took it three times before I finally passed the damn English 100. And uh, he said, no, no. He said, we need a guy to take Aku's place. Somebody's not afraid to tell it like it is. Coach joined Michael W. Perry on KSSK in August of 1983 and has been telling it like it is ever since. Here's what he had to say about his longtime radio partner. In this business, you gotta be, uh, you gotta be durable. I sort of like about Mike Perry. He's got a lot of energy. He's durable. He's cute. He wears a little bit too much makeup for my liking, but at least he stopped putting on, stop putting the lipstick lately. Uh, but I learned a lot, a lot from him. The Perry and Price Show continues to be one of the top morning drive radio broadcasts in Hawaii. He's had the pleasure of meeting and interviewing countless celebrities, including Red Skelton, Vincent Price, Mickey Rooney, Burt Lancaster, and he even got to play golf with President Clinton. Played with him twice. Two times he came. The first time he came, I made him laugh so much. The next time he came, he asked me to play with him again. 
but he was playing that when he played at Wiley. The guy can eat. I can't believe it. But, you know, he's a real happy guy. You know, he's a real uh, very nice, nice guy. He wanted to go eat someplace local. He didn't want to eat at Wiley afterwards to eat lunch. So I said, do you want to go to a local place? And I said, yeah. So I took him at Zippy's down in Kauaikai. His wife almost died. I said, what kind of a place is this? I said, you know, the president wanted to go to a local place. This is the kind of place local people come. Have a plate lunch. <laughs> in addition to his job on the radio, Coach also started reporting for local television stations. KITD called me up and said, how's about... Uh, writing reports for us. Of course, I was an operation intelligence specialist when I was in the Army, so I knew how to write reports and stuff like that. So that was, that was pretty easy. I was very, very lucky to have Aku and, and you know, Earl McDaniels and Heftel gave me uh, you know, a lot of good advice. And, uh, and of course, then I, hooked, I was doing radio and television at the same time. Coach went on to win a number of journalism awards for his reporting. In the late 80s, Coach had an idea for yet another project. This one required him to get support from the Oahu Interscholastic Association and Oceanic Cable. It was a partnership that would forever change local sports and local television. His idea was to air live high school football games on TV, something that hadn't been done before here in the islands. That's why I made the pitch to uh... The OIA, Don, uh, Don Carroll at that time. And I said, you know, this would be a great community service. Might not make money right off the bat, but at least you could break even once it caught on because people want to see their kids on television, especially if they're in the military or they're displaced or separated. Right? So he was the one that said, uh, you know, yeah, he said, we can do that. He says, and I'll put Mitzi in charge of it. Then when I met Mitzi, I went, oh no. The smallest, most dainty person in uh, Oceanic. You know, I said, oh my goodness, she's gonna go nuts with these. But she was more than up to the task. The first OIA football doubleheader aired live on OC 16, September 13, 1989. Coach called the game with Matt Pinto. OC 16's live prep sports broadcasts have only improved over the last two plus decades and Coach Price continues to cover OC 16's live football broadcasts every Friday night. He said that if he had to choose between all of his jobs, doing OC 16's games would be the one that he would stick with. If I had to take all of them and keep just one, I would, I would like to be with the Oceanic. Because you can actually see what you're doing, what you're talking about. You know, you can talk to the parents, you can talk to them. Uh, you know, they come up, <laughs> they come up to you on the street, you say, hey, you know, my son really katooshed that guy, you know. I mean, they, something that you can relate to them, no matter what, what kind of job you have or anything. It's something that is sports for high school kids, men and women now, not just men is really, really significant. I don't know how to make uh, people understand that. It's right there in front of their face. They just, they just don't, they don't see it. You know, parents talk about controlling their kids. They're talking about the social, you know, they're talking about kids having trouble in class and stuff like that and drugs and everything. Hey, you know, a lot of their problems would be solved if they just would get out there and get that school spirit, personal pride thing going on. You know, it's just not enough of it. Of course, it's, that's a real big project for, for somebody. You know, but I'll do it as long as I can. Coach's passion for sports doesn't end with what happens on the field. He's concerned with every aspect of the game, which is one of the reasons why he helped create the OIA Foundation. We've just changed the name to it. This is a scoop, actually. This has not even been in the paper yet. We changed the name to the Dwight Toyama Foundation because he has a, a vision. You gotta have some kind of institutional memory. You gotta know where you came from. 
you can see the Hawaiians now, they're having a hard time trying to figure out where they came from, you know? If you forget where you came from and you forget how you got like you are, good or bad, then uh, the, your vision of the future is not clear. So the, the idea of a foundation is to give them some kind of, the coaches and athletic directors, some kind of support in an environment where everything is so uncertain. The largest program, I'm talking math, English, science, you know, is the sports. Involves more than 4,000 kids. Nothing else compares to that. And if you do the geometrical progression of their aunties and uncles and grandparents and fathers and mothers and brothers and friends, I mean, you're talking about a huge social machine. So we just have to just give them support, you know, and have recognition banquets so they remember who the people were that got them where they are. Tune in to watch Coach Price every Friday night this fall during live prep football only on OC16. Or you can listen to him every weekday on KSSK.